Welcome to this AQA GCSE Geography Revision Blast. Today we're focusing on resource management and we're going to give you a UK overview before focusing on the energy option. This is part of the challenge of resource management on paper two. Our first activity is altered vowels. Each of the key terms shown have had the vowels changed to an alternative which makes them tricky to work out. You just need to work out what the key phrases are and they are all linked to the UK overview of resource management. To give you a little bit of a clue, the first two are going to be about food, three and four are about water, and five and six are about energy. So here we go. So this one is to do with food. Okay, hopefully it's a nice easy one to get started. It is food miles which is a distance covered supplying food to customers from field to fork. Right, number two. Again, to do with food. So this is something that has increased in popularity over the last couple of decades. Let's have a look. It is organic produce. It's food produced without the use of chemicals. So not using fertilizers and not using pesticides. Right, this one is to do with water. Okay, let's have a look at what it might be. So let's reveal. It is a water stress. So it's, this is when the demand for water exceeds the supply in a certain period or when poor quality restricts the use of that. Okay, also to do with water. Okay, let's reveal. It is water transfer scheme, so matching supply with demand by moving water from an area with a water surplus to another experiencing water deficit. So in the UK, you might move water from the northwest down to the southeast. Right, the last two, remember, are to do with energy. So what do we think this one might be? So let's reveal. It is the energy mix, a range of energy sources of a region or a country, both renewable and non-renewable. And this changes all the time. It changes day to day, but it also changes over the long term as well. So if we think about over the long term, we are using much less fossil fuels than we've used in the past, but they also change on a daily basis. So we might have some days in the UK where we have a huge proportion of energy that is produced using wind power because we have windy days. It does, yeah, changes day to day based on sort of different variables. Right, last one for altered vowels. Okay, have we spotted it yet? Let's have a look. It is energy security. So this is the idea of uninterrupted availability of energy sources at an affordable price. And we could argue that in the UK that we don't really have this at the moment. We're very dependent on other countries for our energy, which means that it makes our supply quite insecure anyway. And our prices in the last year have skyrocketed. Much of that is down to the um, the Ukraine and Russia conflict, but we've also got energy companies creaming off huge profits and not really passing those on. Um, to their consumers. And we were warned before Christmas that over the winter months, we might actually find we had blackouts, although we didn't, but we were warned that that could happen. Right, let's move on to our next activity. So we are focusing on food miles. So that was our first altered vowels. What we'd like you to do is to put these imports in order of food miles from those travelled the furthest to those who have travelled the least distance. So if you pause the video for a moment, pop them in the right order. So furthest away first. And then once you've got them in what you think is the right order, unpause the video and we will check to see whether you have got them right or not. Okay, if you haven't paused already, please do. Let's reveal the answers. So in the first place, we've got Lamb from New Zealand traveling over 18,000 kilometers, in fact, 18,800 kilometers. We then got B from Argentina coming across the Atlantic, traveling 11,600 kilometers. Prawns from Thailand at nine and a half thousand kilometers. Mangoes from Brazil at 9,200 kilometers. 
beans from Kenya at 6,800 kilometers, and bananas from Dominica in the Caribbean, which is five and a half thousand kilometers. Okay, and there are all sorts of issues with food miles, obviously, particularly the amount of CO2 that is emitted the, if you are bringing in products from thousands of miles away. Right, we're going to move on to a red herring round this time. So you are going to see four items. You have to decide what's the odd one out and why. And we've got three of these to complete. So our first one is here. So washing clothes, showering, flushing toilets and manufacturing. Which of those is the four? So which of those four is the odd one out and why? So if you can pause the video for a moment, if you need a little bit of time to think. So let's reveal the answer, which is the odd one out and why. It is manufacturing because the other three are domestic uses of water. Right, let's move on to number two. Increase in water intensive appliances, growing population, more homes are being built and water conservation. Which of the four items is the odd one out and why? Again, if you need to pause to have a little bit of think, please do. So which of those is the odd one out and why? Let's reveal. It is water conservation. The others are for reasons why the UK demand for water is increasing. Why our last red herring is this. Industrial discharge, imposed fines, fertiliser runoff and chemicals from old mine workings. Which of the four items is the odd one out and why? Okay, pause the video if you need to. We are about to reveal. Okay, it is imposing fines. The others are sources of water pollution. And obviously you can be given fines if you are caught as a company dumping any of those things into local rivers. Let's move on to a connection wall. So on the screen you have 12 phrases. These need grouping into three and they are all to do with water and conservation. So what we're going to do is we're going to get you to think about the three different groups of phrases here, but we're going to give you a little bit of a clue. So I'm going to ask you firstly to find four phrases that are linked to recycled or reclaimed water. So four phrases that are linked to recycled or reclaimed water. Pause the video for a moment. Note down the four that you think are about recycled and reclaimed water. When you're happy that you've got the right four, unpause the video and we will check your answers. If you haven't paused the video, please do so, as we are about to reveal the first group. Right, let's have a look then. So our recycled and our reclaimed water are used in cooling, in steel making and energy production, reusing treated domestic or industrial waste water, used in fish farming and agriculture, and sewage pumped into lagoons to help algae grow and oxygenate, oxygenate water. So this, these are all to do with recycled and reclaimed water. So our next group is to do with grey water. Okay, so our next group of four is to do with grey water. If you haven't already paused the video, please do so because we are about to reveal. So grey water is used for irrigation and watering plants. It's taken from sinks, bath, showers, washing machines. It may contain traces of dirt, food, grease, hair and cleaning products. And if used within 24 hours, it provides valuable fertiliser for plants. What we would like you to do now is work out what links the last four. So we've got turn off tap when brushing teeth, only use washing machines and dishwashers for a full load, install low flow shower heads, and install a twin flush toilet system. What links this remaining four on the screen? I'll just give you a moment. If you need a bit longer, then please pause. So what links our last ones? Let's have a look. We've got turning tap on when brushing teeth, using only using washing machines and dishwashers when they are full, installing a low flow shower head or installing a twin flush toilet system. And of course they are all ways to save water at home. If you work that out, 
then well done. Right, let's move on to a bubble quiz. So with a bubble quiz, the number of answers that are correct can range from zero to all four. Your job is to identify the correct ones. Question one, why has the UK's demand for energy decreased? So A, new homes being built. B, decline of heavy industry. C, better home insulation. D, population growth. So why has the UK's demand for energy decreased? Okay, let's reveal the answers. It is B and C, decline of heavy industry and better home insulation. Number two, which of these energy sources are non-renewable? Is it A, oil, B, coal, C, gas, D, nuclear? Okay, identify the correct answers. There we are, oil, coal and gas. Number three. Which of these issues are associated with wind farms? A, risk to birds. B, visual impact on the landscape. C, decommissioning process. D, wastewater going into habitats. So which are associated with wind farms? Let's reveal. It is the risk of bir to birds and the visual impact on the landscape. Number four. Which of these countries does the UK import coal from? France, Colombia, Australia, or the USA? Okay, so we're looking for countries that we import coal from. So Colombia, Australia, and the USA, we do not import coal from France. And question five, which of these are associated with fracking? A, fewer emissions than traditional sources. B, the possibility of earthquakes. C, pollution of groundwater and D, expensive extraction process. So we'll just leave those up for a moment. So which are associated with fracking? Let's reveal the answers. It is all of them. So it is a really controversial uh, way of creating energy. Let's move on to a categorised activity. We are focusing on nuclear energy with this activity. We have down the side, eight impacts of nuclear energy. You have a minute to sort them into economic and environmental. Off we go. Okay, let's have a look. So our economic impacts are that it's expensive to build, high cost to produce electricity, decommissioning is expensive, but it does create jobs and boost local economy by the new plants. There are lots of environmental impacts. It does produce fewer emissions and other non-renewable sources. Processing and storing is difficult. There is a potential for toxic or radioactive spills and the warm water that comes as a waste byproduct impacts river habitats. And our final activity of the UK overview section of this revision blast is a quick MCQ round. So we've got five multiple choice questions. Our first one is, in 2016, how much of the UK's primary energy supply came from renewable energy? Was it A, 7%, B, 17%, C, 27%, D, 37%. Let's reveal, it is 17%. It has, in the last few years, increased significantly beyond that. Number two, in which sea does the UK have the largest reserves of oil and gas? Is it A, the Irish Sea, B, the English Channel, C, the North Sea, or D, the Celtic Sea? 
let's reveal. It is the North Sea. So there are lots of platforms, particularly off the coast of Scotland, where lots of oil and gas drilling takes place. Number three. Identify the main form of renewable energy used to produce the UK's electricity supply. Is it A, hydroelectric power, B, solar, C, wind, or is it D, tidal? Okay, let's reveal it is wind. And there were some occasions last year where on certain days of the year, wind energy accounted for about 35% of all energy in the energy mix that day. Number four. Identify the form of energy which can be extracted using the process of fracking. Is it A, oil, B, coal, C, shale gas, or is it D, bitumen? Okay, let's reveal. It is shale gas, so it's a gas that's stored in rocks. And our last question before we move on to the optional topic is... Number five, which type of energy makes use of uranium? Is it A, nuclear, B, wind, C, biomass, or D, hydroelectric power? Let's reveal. It is, of course, nuclear. So well done if you got those correct. So we have covered the UK overview of resource management, and we are now going to move on to the energy option. We're going to start the energy option with a 60 second challenge. You've got 60 seconds to match the key terms, the definitions, matching the numbers on the right with the letters on the left. Off we go. Okay, hopefully you managed to get all of those matched up. So let's have a look. So we've got A4, blackouts, which are power cuts resulting from a shortfall in energy production. We have B6, energy conflict, when shortages of energy can lead to political conflict if one state holds a bigger share of an energy resource. C2 is energy deficit, where the demand for energy exceeds the energy that is available in an area. D5 is energy insecurity, where supplies of energy sources are unreliable, they may be interrupted, or prices may fluctuate with the potential for blackouts. We've got E1, which are fossil fuels, natural fuels such as coal or gas formed over millions of years from the remains of living organisms, which have to be burned to release energy. And then right at the bottom, we've got F3, non-renewable energy. Energy sources are finite, so will run out one day. OK, let's move on to a give me four activity. What we would like you to do is to give four factors that affect energy supply. You have got 30 seconds to note four factors down. Off we go. Okay, let's have a look. So four factors that affect energy supply are the climate. So for example, some of our renewable energies need specific conditions. So solar power needs a sunshine hours, hydroelectric power needs high rainfall, and wind turbines need lots of wind. We've also got geology. So the availability of fossil fuels, for example, but also you've got things like the potential to produce geothermal energy if you are somewhere where there is tectonic activity. 
The cost of infrastructure is really important. So the cost of things like pipelines, oil rigs, building dams, etc. And then at the bottom, we've got political stability. This affects where countries can get their energy sources from. So for example, we've got a real issue at the moment with coal and gas because of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Right, let's move on to a mend the gap activity. Can you complete the text provided by adding the missing word? So our question is, how does population growth lead to an increase in energy consumption? You are going to see a piece of text that explains that, but it does have some of the key words missing. Now, the key words have all been replaced by the a number of dashes that would which would correspond to the number of letters in each of those words. So what we would like you to do is to pause the video, read through the text, think about what the missing words are, note them down. Once you're happy you've got the missing words correct, then unpause and we will go through them with you. So pause the video now. If you haven't paused the video, please do so because we are about to reveal the missing answers. So more people means an increase in demand for energy. More people using vehicles, more people using technology such as computers, mobiles and consoles, and more people needing heat and light in their homes. We will also need to construct more homes, buildings, house services and infrastructure, which all take energy to build. So quite straightforward there. Hopefully you got those correct. Right, our second one is this question. How does economic development lead to an increase in energy consumption? Like before, you're going to see a block of text that explains how that's happened, but it does have some missing words that you need to fill in. So here is our text. So again, you've got five missing words here that are, which obviously would make it make sense. You need to pause the video and work out what they are. And like before, the number of dashes corresponds with the number of letters in the word. The fourth one is six. For some reason, it has gone across two lines, which it shouldn't have done. So pause the video. If you haven't paused, please do, because we are about to reveal these answers to you. Let's have a look. As a country's economy becomes more developed, it requires more energy. Much of this energy demand is linked to industrialization, particularly manufacturing in factories. As a country becomes wealthier, the standard of living will increase for the population, which means there'll be more people that can afford power hungry appliances in their homes, such as washing machines. Well done if you got that correct. We're going to move on to a 30 second challenge. Our question this time is, what are the impacts of energy insecurity on food production? Off we go. Hopefully you've managed to note something down for that question. Let's have a look. So about 30% of global energy is used to produce food, for example, to power farm machinery, for storage and for transportation, and to manufacture a pesticide and fertilizers. So less energy means that less food can be produced, which in turn will have an impact on food security. Some farmers have recently opted for alternatives to expensive fossil fuels to generate energy needed for production. So for example, they might use biofuels, However, this still makes food costly and food prices have increased. So sorry, it makes the food production costly. And in many LICs, a firewood is a main source of energy. Often people have to walk for miles to collect it, meaning that they spend less time farming, which again affects food security. Let's do another one. So our question this time is, what are the impacts of energy insecurity on industrial output? 30 seconds. Okay, let's have a look. 
So the demand for energy for industry is really high. Fossil fuels are used as a source of power, but they're also used as a raw material for some products. So, for example, oil is a main raw ingredient of plastics and of, of many cosmetics and toiletries. So there will be an impact here. Many LICs and NEs experience frequent blackouts and these halt industrial production and they are very costly to the economy. And such outages can result in smaller companies having to shut down permanently as they can't recoup the loss of hours of production. Right, one more 30 second challenge. The final question here is how can energy insecurity lead to conflict? Okay, let's have a look. So there are lots and lots of examples around the world where conflict over energy resources has led to full-scale wars. So, for example, the Iran-Iraq war in the um, 1980s, the Gulf War in the 1990s, and they're all about countries fighting to control energy sources. It's really common for conflict to be fueled when one country holds a bigger share of an energy resource. And the most obvious example here is Russia, which has about a quarter of the world's supplies of natural gas. And it means it can threaten to raise prices or even cut off supplies to countries that are dependent on its gas supplies. And this is obviously made even more complex at the moment by the current Russian-Ukraine conflict, where lots of states are refusing to buy Russian energy sources as a protest and a show of solidarity with the Ukraine. Right, let's move on to a round of altered vowels. We're focusing on alternative energy sources. Each one that you see has had its vowels changed to an alternative. You just need to try and work them out. Some of them are very easy. Some of them are a bit more tricky. So we're going to start off with a nice easy one here. Hopefully it's instantly recognisable. I'm not even going to give you a, a moment to guess it. It is, of course, wind. So this is all about having turbines on land or at sea which are turned by the wind to generate electricity. Now, once they are constructed, the cost to run wind turbines is quite low. They can be built offshore and they take up, so meaning that they take up less valuable land. And improved technology means that they require less maintenance and can generate more power and are less noisy than they previously were. But some people claim they ruin the landscape and they pose a danger to flying birds. They are also expensive to construct and wind is unpredictable. So at certain times of the year, they generate far less energy. And at other times, the en energy generated is so much that it can't be stored. OK, moving on to another fairly easy one. So we'll just give you a moment to work it out. Let's have a look. It is, of course, solar. So solar energy is generated by photovoltaic cells, which are mounted together to make solar panels, and the technology converts sunlight into electricity. Cheaper to install than some other renewable resources, and it's quite easy and cheap to maintain. And obviously, there is huge potential in some low-income countries with sunny climates. So solar farms are being developed across the Tar Desert in India, for example. However... Energy production is seasonal. For a temperate climate like the UK, there will be times of the year where they wouldn't generate much energy at all. And in some countries, you wouldn't actually generate much at any point of the year. They do also take up a lot of land that people think should be used to produce food. Right, next one. OK, let's reveal this one. It is biomass, so it's energy produced from organic matter, either through burning dung or plant matter, or the production of biofuels by processing specially grown plants such as sugarcane. It can be produced domestically, so sources of biomass energy are widespread and are easily available, and it also reduces and makes use of waste, meaning that less waste ends up in landfill. However, it does cause deforestation as rainforests are cut down to make way for biofuel plantations, which take up a huge amount of space. And additionally, when the organic matter is burned, it emits harmful, harmful pollutants into the atmosphere, including CO2, which we know is a greenhouse gas. Right, number four.
Right, have we worked it out? It is geothermal, and this is all about water being heated underground by hot rocks, which creates steam that drives turbines to generate electricity. It doesn't emit any harmful gases, and it is very efficient, so it can generate a lot of energy. So a good example here is it does provide over a third of Iceland's energy and about 90% of its heat. But it is limited to tectonically active countries. So, for example, the reason that Iceland can benefit so much is because it's on a constructed plate margin on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Right, our last one is on the screen currently. So try and work this one out. OK, have we got it? It is hydroelectric power. So HEP is generated using dams, and these can either be quite large or they can be small scale. And the dam has water turning turbines inside it. Now, hydroelectric plants make up about 80% of all renewable energy across the globe. And they're really popular in upland areas with big rivers. And that water flow can be controlled in order to gener generate more electricity when the demand peaks. However, it is very controversial as the large dams are expensive and they reduce the amount of water feeding rivers downstream, causing issues for local communities such as not having enough water for farming and disrupting fish migration. They also cause mass flooding upstream, displacing local communities when reservoirs are constructed. The change in depth of water also has an impact on wildlife which can't adapt to the change in water temperature. Well done if you got all five of those correct. Right, last activity is an on balance. We are looking at the idea of natural gas extraction. So over the last decade, there have been a numbers um, of projects across the UK looking at the process of fracking in order to extract natural gas to try and increase our energy security. However, this is incredibly uh, controversial. So let's have a look at some of the benefits and the drawbacks of natural gas extraction. So what we would like you to do is to pause the video, give yourself a couple of minutes to note down a couple of benefits. When you're happy that you've got a couple of benefits, unpause the video and we will compare notes. Off you go. Okay, if you haven't paused the video already, please do so because we are about to reveal. Let's have a look. So natural gas is much cleaner than other fossil fuels as it emits fewer toxic chemicals like sulfur dioxide and nitrous dioxide, and it emits almost half the CO2. So therefore it does contribute less to air pollution and climate change. And there are lots of it right across the globe. Technology has also made it easier to extract and it is easy to transport through pipelines and overland by sea tankers and there is a lower risk of environmental accidents than with oil transportation. So there are lots of benefits here to natural gas. But like I said, it has been hugely controversial and there are lots of people really against the idea of extracting natural gas. So let's have a look at what some of those drawbacks might be. So just pause the video again. Give yourself a couple of minutes. Note down some drawbacks. When you're ready, unpause and we will compare notes. OK, if you haven't paused already, please do so because we are about to reveal. OK, let's have a look. So firstly, um, it involves a process of fracking. So this is where high pressure liquid, which is made of water, sand and chemicals, is used to fracture the rock where the gas is stored so it can be released. Now, people in areas where fracking has been proposed are worried about the risk of earthquakes and the contamination of underground water supplies. It is also a very expensive process. Fracking itself is expensive to do, but the infrastructure that supports natural gas extraction is very costly, particularly building and maintaining pipelines. And although it does have fewer toxic chemicals and other fossil fuels, it, do, it still does emit greenhouse gas emissions, so therefore it does contribute to climate change, even though it might not be as much as traditional fossil fuels. So well done if you got those correct. And well done for getting to the end of this revision blast. So we have covered the UK overview of resource management along with the energy option. 
through a variety of activities to test your recall. If you haven't already done so, please have a look at some of the other revision blasts in the playlist because we have covered the entire specification. And all that's left for me is just to wish you the very best of luck across your three papers.